Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. I'm Father Mark Del Cuse. I'm director of Christ Church Parish on Kent Island, and I'm grateful that you have taken some time to be with us for this Easter celebration. I want to thank those that will help me with the service today. Liza Hamill and Jeff Pike will be serving as Eucharistic ministers. Caitlin Horvath is manning the, uh, the uh, video. And of course, Emily and Gary Van Essen uh, are looking after the music pieces that will go along with this service. Uh, they'll announce hymns, uh, and if you don't have them, don't worry about it. Just enjoy. Sing along as you know best. Um, and the service will be the right to Holy Eucharist, uh, Eucharistic Prayer B, when we get to that point, page 367, and the lessons for Easter. We're so grateful for your presence here today. Take this in segments or take it all together, but know that Christ is risen, that he reigns in our hearts, that God has declared the victory, and that that victory is ours. God bless you as we worship together. Our opening hymn is hymn 207, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join with the angels as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace to Jesus by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him to everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness forgiveness of sins through his name the word of the lord thanks be to god today's psalm is psalm 118 verses 1 and 2 and 14 through 24. please join in singing the antiphon as shown on your screen
letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, the first day, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdala and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. Indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quietly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And he came to them, and they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Speak to you in the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen indeed in a particular way. In a way we weren't prepared for. In a way that we could not have imagined. The Lord is risen indeed in our hearts, in our hearts, in our homes in our family. The Lord is risen indeed. Death is conquered and we are free. And we've had to come through some very tough times for that to happen. I know you may look around today and say, gosh, I'm still at home. I miss my family. I I miss the Easter egg hunt. And yet at the same time, we know that the end of the story has now been told. Christ is risen and we are free. It's hard to know how all that coming through the difficulties can help us to understand who we are. In these past 40 days, I've been praying a lot about what would be revealed as we gather on Easter Sunday. Megan McKenna has been one of my helps along the way. She's a consummate storyteller, a person of faith, and also a person of great human wisdom. And so I offer today the parable of the violin maker. Once upon a time, the maker of violin wanted to choose a disciple to take his place. He had painstakingly shown each of his students every aspect of making a violin, from choosing the wood and aging it for many years, to hand carving and shaping the pieces, and finally the varnishing. One one young woman was superb and nearly an expert at the craft. The only skill she lacked, though, was probably the most important, She couldn't seem to be able to determine which tree held the best wood for a violin. Again and again, the master had taken her out to look at the trees. He took her during the spring thaws and the strong winds, the hot summers, and especially the shifts of seasons from the autumn when the leaves dropped to the harshness of winter. And they had hard winters. Brutal, cold, with long periods when ice collected on the trees, breaking the limbs, furious winds, blowing snow. Standing in the barren forest, he would ask her, which trees hold the wood of the violin? Invariably, she would pick the ones that didn't look like they were taking much of a beating. Trees protected by others from the worst of the weather. Or she would choose trees for their graceful appearance, even during the storms. He knew that the wood of the tree she chose would not produce violins of superior quality. She had surely learned all the other skills, but he began to despair of teaching her how to make this first and most crucial choice. So he took her out to the same forest one more time. In the gale they stood facing the trees, and he asked her to talk about the trees. She felt sorry for the battered ones those taking the initial force, 
the ones that formed a weather break for the trees behind as she spoke of her sorrow and how they cracked and bent and even split in the blizzard, he realized why she was making her choices. Look at them, he commanded. Listen to the limbs in the wind. Close your eyes and know that they are the ones that are being tuned. In that moment, she knew and understand, understood and she opened her eyes to see those standing in the forefront, those that stood and faced the elements were already making music, having absorbed all the stresses of the elements. From their wood, she could make instruments capable of magnificent sound. Instruments capable of making magnificent sounds. Mary and the other Mary there at the tomb had spent a two-day vigil Jesus had been brought down from the tomb. And Matthew tells us that the women sat across from the tomb waiting to see what was happening. And then when Sabbath occurred, and, and according to Jewish regulations, they went home and they kept Sabbath and they prepared to go back to see what had happened in the morning. The resurrection, the storm, or in this case, the earthquake occurred right before their eyes. Suddenly, everything was transformed as the stone rolled away and the living guards became like dead men and the dead Jesus was nowhere to be seen. Instead, an angel came and said, go ahead and tell your brothers that he has been raised. Go ahead and tell the other people that God is doing something new and valuable and beyond all imagining. When the women leave the tomb, they have not seen Jesus. When the women leave the tomb, they have not seen anything than an, other than an earthquake and the frightened dead men guards. But still they know they have a message to tell. And on the way, they encounter the risen Jesus who offers them greetings, who offers them peace, who offers them the new story, the new song. He is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joan Chittister, in her book on the Apostles' Creed, In Search of Belief, says, To say, I believe in Jesus Christ who rose from the dead then, is to say, I believe that the resurrection goes on and on forever. Every time Jesus rises in our own hearts in new ways, the resurrection happens again. Every time we see Jesus where we did not recognize him before, in the faces of the poor, in the love of the unloved, in the revelatory moment of life, Jesus rises anew. But that is not all. The real proof of the resurrection lies not in the transformation of Jesus alone, but in the transformation waiting for us to, to accept it. To say I believe in Jesus Christ who rose from the dead is to say something about myself at the same time. It says that I am ready to be transformed. Once the Christ life rises in me, I rise to new life as well. Christ is risen. We are rising. We sing at Easter. But it has a great deal more to do with life than with death. I know that Jesus has been transformed. As a result, everything around me has been transformed. Transformation is never a private affair. It is a decisive one. Friends, this season, this time of social distancing and separation, this time when we are making spiritual communions instead of physical ones, is a time when we can begin to see the renewal of the world. It's a time when our hearts should go out for the hearts of the poor, for those who don't have health care, for those who have need of people to care for them and no one around. And our hearts go out for those on the front lines, the EMTs and first responders, hospital workers, and those who bring them supplies, for those who keep our food chains going. This is a time of transformation for us all. And in the end, the question will be, how have we lived into this resurrection? Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, is now accessible to everyone. He hears our every prayer. He abides close to our hearts. And so on this Easter day, as we begin 50 days of celebration, let us begin to work the clay 
to mold it into the face of Jesus Christ. Let us begin to work the clay that molds us into the hands and feet of Christ. Let us begin to work the clay that shows that God reigns, death is conquered, and we fear no more. Yesterday, I read a prayer from Walter Brueggemann, a hero of mine, a man who can articulate far better than me what this possibility is, this transformation. One of the last prayers in his book, Awed to Heaven, Rooted in Earth, is my prayer for you and for me this day. Easter us, he writes. Easter us. You, God, who terrified the waters, who crashed your thunder, who shook the earth and scared the wits out of chaos, you, God, who with a strong arm saved your people by miracle and wondrous act, you are the same God to whom we turn. We turn in our days of trouble and in our weary nights. We look for your steadfast love and are dismayed. We wait for your promises, but we wait with fatigue. We ponder your forgetfulness and lack of compassion, and we grow silent. Our lives addressed to you, have this bittersweet taste of loud clashing miracles and weak need doubt. We come in our bewilderment and our wonderment, deeply trusting, almost afraid to trust too much, passionately insisting, too timid to insist too much, fervently hoping, exhausted for hoping too much. Look upon us in our deep need, Mark the wounds of our sisters and brothers just here. Notice the turmoil in our lives, the lives of our family. Credit the incongruity of the rich and the poor in our very city and the staggering injustices abroad in our land. Tend to the rage out of control, rage justified by displacement, rage gone crazy by absence, silence, and deprivation. Measure the suffering, count the sufferers, number the wounded. You, tamer of the chaos and mender of all tears in the canvas of creation, we ponder your suffering, your crown of thorns, your garment taken in lottery, your marked life, and now we throw upon your suffering humiliation, the suffering of the world. You, defeater of death, whose power could not hold you, come in your Easter, Come in your sweeping victory. Come in your glorious new life. Easter us. Solve our wounds. Break injustice. Bring peace. Guarantee neighbor. Easter us in joy and in strength. Be our God, your true self, Lord of life. Massively turn our life towards your life, away from our anti-neighbor, anti-self deathliness. Hear our grateful, thankful, unashamed hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Prayers of the People, Form 3, is found on page 387 of your prayer book. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially on this glorious Easter day for all who serve God in the church around the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Santosh, our bishop, for the church distributed in homes around the planet, 
and for those who pray and rejoice, rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for the leaders of the world, for Donald, our president, for the Congress and the courts, for the United Nations and the work of the World Health Organization. We pray for those who suffer in this COVID-19 pandemic, for those in hospital, for those suffering at home. We pray for those who care for them. We pray for those who will bury them. And we pray for those we carry on our hearts today, for those we love and cannot hold today, for those that we can care for with our hearts. I invite your prayers for those you love. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with those around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Today's service is a spiritual communion. The church has taught that those who are not able to receive can receive by faith. Today we join in a prayer written centuries ago that allows us to participate in a spiritual communion. Let us pray. My, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be reunited with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, bless you and keep you this day and those whom you love forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Our final hymn is hymn 180, He is Risen.
there, friends. Um, when I taped the announcements, I had a coughing fit in the middle of it, and I thought I could survive it, but it really was too awful for words. So this is the uh, post-church announcements, just to let you know of my gratitude to uh, Jeff Pike and Liza Hamill for being Eucharistic ministers, for Caitlin Horvath for being my videographer, for Gary and Emily Van Essen, who have put all this together with the music and everything, and for all the saints that make this place such a wonderful parish to serve. We fed more than 300 children uh, through the backpack program this last weekend. Uh, thousands of items going out from here and more go every day. And so um, we keep in mind Kathy and Dick Sells, if you'd like to help with those kinds of foods, uh, talk with them. We might need to make sure that they get in and get sanitized before we send them out. Juanita Domkowski continues to do great work with the uh, Graysonville Food Pantry, and you can also give food or money um, for that. All the donation buttons on the uh, website and in the uh, text to give allow you to specify funds that would go to backpacks or to uh, the food pantry, so do that as you see best. Also, thank you to all of you who've been giving quite regularly. Uh, it's a joy to go out to the mailbox now because I see your faces and I pray for you even without opening your envelopes. Uh, keep watching the website. There'll be plenty more things going on. I have eight more days of Easter to celebrate. Easter week goes all the way until a week from today. And then uh, the Education for Ministry folk are going to do daily meditations for the next two weeks after that. Easter is 50 days long. And so we can continue to watch and pray together as a faith community. If you have needs, call and leave messages on the church um, voicemail, or you can email me at frmark at ccpki.org, and we'll make sure that we can do whatever we can for you. Again, thank you to all of you. God bless you. Happy Easter. Have a celebration today. Eat something special. Share a story of Easter's past. And remember that we are a resurrection people and that God has Eastered us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Mm -hmm.